When I was younger, I heard an amazing phrase that went like this, and it completely transformed my play. It's not about what you play. It's about how you play. It's not about what you play. It's about how you play. And in this day and age, with information overload, we're always trying to learn more, right? Don't you think if you just learn more, if you just keep searching on YouTube, if you just keep learning more lines, more licks, more notes, you're eventually gonna get to the place that you imagine yourself being in your head, right? Unfortunately, I'm here to tell you, it doesn't exactly work like that. With that first phrase that I said, what we wanna do is take the tools that you already know, the things that you already have in your repertoire, in your tool bag, and we want to make those as musical as possible because ultimately at the end of the day, right, what are we doing? We're not just trying to play notes, we're making music. And that's about expressiveness, development, textures, and moving people's souls, right? I wanna feel moved when I go to performance. I don't wanna feel like a robot's playing up there on the stage, right? So in this particular podcast lesson, no matter if you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced player, you're gonna be able to use all of the musical textures I'm gonna be giving you and teaching you to drastically enhance your performance today, today. And I promise you, when you focus on these textures, you're immediately going to level up to a brand new transformative level of playing jazz piano, I promise you. My name is Brendan Lowe, creator and founder of jazzpianoschool.com. Don't forget to go to the website, jazzpianoschool.com, to check out all of the other free education we have. We do have an amazing launch and release of a huge, huge update coming on Black Friday. If you're interested in getting more information about that, go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash Black Friday 2023. With that being said, let's dive right in. enough to get us into that but so essentially what's happening here is you're hearing lots and lots of different textures right lots and lots of different textures and this whole particular podcast episode is about creating conceptual textures in your improv now I bet when you first heard me start this solo off in that low end part of the piano you were like "Ooh, what is happening here now that caught your ear and it caught your attention because it's way different than you're used to hearing and then when I went up and I used a different texture when my left hand came in for the very first time. I bet you were like, ooh, that sounds great too. All these different textures that I'm going to go over today in this podcast episode is going to be about creating contrast and different, introducing different elements into your improv because all this stuff can instantly change your improv and elevate your sound and bring you to a higher level without learning actually any more tools, any more flashy licks, anything like that. You can literally take what you know now and bring it to the next level. So I'm going to go through all of the 11 ways you can do this. Let's start with something very simple. Lots of notes versus little notes. Now I just gave you a little teaser in the beginning, but the contrast between a lot of notes and a little notes is drastic and you can already start to implement this. Let's check it out. So I will switch back and forth between a lot of notes and a little notes. Here we go. Right? So that's a little notes. Here's a lot of notes. So just continuously playing, right? So two very, very different textures. And when you start to work on those and 
you know, just think about that concept in your playing. It's going to drastically change everything. The next one I want to turn you on to, which I started with in my solo, is different registers. Different registers. I have to set my iPhone on uh, unlock so that it keeps stays on my notes here. But different registers. This is so easy for you to do. Play in the low end register. Oscar Peterson would do this all the time with his bass notes and a solo piano. <laughs> That's such an awesome texture. Like how many uh, how many times can you say you go down to that register and solo down there? It doesn't have to be fancy. Right? Just play one note. That's it. That's all you need. Play in that super high end register, right? So here is different registers and how that might sound. Let's start high. More count bassy ish. That's kind of the high. Here's mid to high. Right? Here's middle. Here's below middle C. Mid to low. Super low, right? Very, very low. So even just moving up and down the registers, anyone can do this. Literally, you can do this right now with all the tools that you have. It's an amazing improv texture for thematic development, improv development, telling a story. Fantastic. Legato versus staccato. So uh, a lot of students come to me and they're playing like this. Right? And that's an amazing texture. Sometimes I'll do that for different types of effects and things on the piano. But the opposite of that is legato. Right? So you just want to play around with that texture. Try both. Try staccato. Try legato. Here's me going back and forth between both of those. Legato, right? Again, this is a little bit more staccato. I'm not going overboard. I could go overboard. If you really kind of wanted to get into... Right? So you can kind of have a dramatic effect or kind of like shift back and forth, which is really cool. That one does take a lot of dexterity. Loud versus soft. Dynamics, right? Dynamics is the most simple, simple texture that you could throw in um, to a lot of your improv immediately today that would drastically change something. Start your solo out soft, right? Start your solo out loud. See what happens, okay? Just mess around with the textures. Here we go. Here's soft. You can do lots of notes soft. It doesn't have to be a little bit of notes, but you can do a little note soft too. and then soft, like have lots of different dynamics.
obviously, okay, you get the picture. But really, as dramatic as you think you're being, go even further with it. Go super loud and super soft. Super loud and super soft. People usually toy around with the textures. They just don't go far enough. Okay, the next one's gonna be little space versus a lot of space. Now, this is the same as little notes or lots of notes, but it's a different mindset. When you think about playing versus not playing, that is going to actually change the way you play. I'm gonna say that again. When you think about playing a lot versus playing a little versus not playing a lot versus not playing a little, those are opposite concepts, right? And it's gonna change the way you play. So now I'm thinking space, little amounts of space versus a lot of amount of space. Here we go. Staccato. So it could be chords. <laughs> Lots of space. Could be loud too, it doesn't have to be. Space, lots of space, little space. Okay, that's an easy one. Single note versus chords. I kind of just demonstrated that. So many of us get into trying to learn lines, like lines in our, um, you know, just improv. So single note melody lines. And we forget we have all of these chords and things we can do. It's such a great texture. We don't always have to learn the single note melody lines. Here we go. Chords versus melody lines. What if I just do... And if you're a beginner, just rootless voicings. Even this is, could be your solo. Hold some. Maybe do some single note melody on the lines now. Back to comping. a whole solo filled with chords, right? That would be super cool too. That's a great texture. I start to, I use a lot on gigs and things like that. This is a great one. One spot versus movement. So many times we think we need to move all over the piano or like at least move within. So many students kind of stay within this range here when they're beginning at improv. Try to stay within like five notes. See how that changes or affects your playing. Like what if I just stay right within C to G? or A to E, or even smaller, like E to G, or maybe just one octave. Pick one octave in the piano, try to stay within that. So I'm gonna do solo within, uh, let's say, let's go D to G here. I'm just gonna go G to D, I'm gonna solo within that fifth. Let's see how this changes my improv here. E flat. I really want to hit this D sharp or F sharp, right? So it's very constricting, but clearly 
what this does when you constrict or restrict, I should say, I guess both constrict and restrict, what that does for your playing is it forces you, all these textures, when you restrict yourself to doing certain textures, it's gonna force you to get out of the things that you're used to doing and be more creative and grow as a person and a player and a musician and improv artist, right? That's what these conceptual ideas are literally meant to do, force you to be more creative than you've ever been before, okay? Left hand versus no left hand, left hand versus no left hand, right? Bill Evans is a master of this. He'll play five courses, no left hand. Keith Jarrett does this too. When the left hand comes in, you're like, oh my God, it's like a whole new solo, right? It's not, He just has. they just haven't been using their left hands, right? Um, you could do the opposite, like have all left hand and then take out your left hand. I love doing that as well. So maybe I'll start with left hand. probably heard the difference in the shift in the atmosphere, right? <laughs> right? And then my left hand comes back in. You're like, oh my God, it's a whole new solo, right? So these movements of like pieces and components kind of moving in and out is a super cool effect. Um, one type of rhythm versus lots of different types of rhythm. So like one rhythm, eighth notes, triplets can be a great texture if you're just using it all the time. A lot of times in my solos and improv right now, even though they're kind of sloppy, they've, I've kind of been using one texture sometimes, uh, sometimes a lot of different rhythms at some time, uh, combinations and things like that. But you'll hear me do like triplets, a whole run of triplets, a whole run of eighth notes, maybe a whole run of 16th notes. Right. And then I'll start to combine them and mix them back and forth. Right. Let's start with eighth notes. Let's do eighth notes. I guess that was a quarter note. Okay, if you take some breaks. Ah. Maybe triplets. Ah. right? All triplets, all sixteenth notes. And then obviously a combination of both is going to give you a complete change in contrast if I were to go into that as well, but I don't have to do that. Um, in time versus no time. It's easier to provide this texture over a ballad. It's going to sound a little fun. Well, I shouldn't say it's a little funny. I kind of do like this texture to kind of like really emphasize time. Sometimes I'll move out of time. I'll just play random strings of, of rhythm random strings of rhythm, and then go back to time. This is a really cool texture, check it out. <laughs> so clearly 
you know, I was going way overboard with that. I probably wouldn't go back and forth with that texture. Obviously, utilizing all these textures is a delicate balance of trying to kind of work these in in a nice development and thematic way over multiple courses. And what these do is allow you to expand your your voice over multiple courses because clearly, like, if I just jam pack all this stuff into one course, what does it do? It kind of just floods it and it's like, oh, wow, right? That's a lot. It is a lot because that's, I'm demonstrating right now, but I'll do a thing at the end where I take my time. I'll use all the textures, uh, right hand focus versus left hand focus. So if I focus on my left hand voicings or movements, um, extensions, reharms, that's going to be a completely different texture than me focusing on my right hand lines. So again, I guarantee 99% of you watching this right now are mostly focused on your right hand lines. Try focusing on your left hand voicings, where your left hand is. Where is it on the piano? Is it low? What, re what harmonies is it playing? Is it playing sharp 11, flat 13, flat 9 over a D7 chord? Are you playing five notes? Are you playing shells? Are you playing three notes? Are you playing four notes? Are you playing spreads? Are you using the bass note in there? Right? Are you playing bass note lines? That's completely acceptable as well. Focus on your left hand and see how creative you can get with your left hand as opposed to your right hand. All right, here we go. <laughs> Already this is different. Five note voicings. Sus. Pedals. Pedals. Resolve it, but clearly, my solo, my approach, all the textures I was getting out of my sounds like that was monumentally different than what I had been getting creatively and expressively out of everything, all the other textures I was demonstrating because I was focused on my left hand. Right, it created a more like a more modern atmosphere in different ways, different types of reharms, um, this pedal effect that I kind of stumbled into and like started creating. Crazy, right? And the last one, which is actually a bonus one, because I thought of it on the spot, which I hear so many students do, and I had to put it in here in the podcast, is long versus short. Long versus short. So many times, all students are so eager to move to the next note, they never end up holding notes. Like students don't hold notes, and it's such a great texture. Hold notes, right? This is a percussive instrument. So all of us just want to play, 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 play. On a trumpet, on some sort of wind instrument, brass, the air creates the sound. So it's much easier for a some sort of air-driven instrument to create a hold, and it's more inter it's more ingrained in their soul and expressiveness because they're blowing through the instrument. We are not doing that. We need to visualize ourselves as some sort of horn player, right? Wind, brass, whatever it is, and think about blowing through our instrument because otherwise we're just playing nonstop. Okay, here we out. Here it is. Check it out. Short versus long, short versus long. Just try holding some notes. How awesome is this? Hold our chords. One, two. Short, short, maybe long. You heard me do this before. A little delayed resolution, right?
Okay, so on and so forth. So long versus short, amazing, amazing texture, even in your soul. Like, just stop, even if you're playing a line. Right, just hold it. Like, stop on a note and hold. Long versus short. Okay, let me do one more thing before I let you go. Oh my goodness, is this 23 minute podcast? Wow. Okay, so I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna try to kind of play a textural solo. I won't go too long, but I'm gonna try to kind of keep my eyes on these and go through all the textures. I'm gonna look at my phone, lots of notes versus little notes, different registers. See if you can pick out what I'm doing. Okay, listen, watch, see if you can pick out the textures I'm using. Okay. And if you kind of wrote them down as I was going, I'm just going to go down a list so you'll, you'll know exactly what I'm doing. thing only went around three times. I was about to do the no time versus time texture with this little thing here. Uh, I'll just play that for you. That was a fun one. I actually don't do this that much. <laughs> so... so I was kind of doing like a switch, a trill switch with no time. Kind of just like I think I hit a note so hard, it's sticking on the MIDI. There we go. Just kind of running down. Like that, there was no time there. It was just a texture, right? And then I was going to move back into time. But anyway, there was a whole bunch of stuff in there, right? And clearly I was kind of exaggerating. And not in all, in all my solos, I don't use all of these. But a lot of times when I focus on an individual one or a couple of them, like they're always in the back of my mind because I've worked on these so much. So what you need to do is really work on these a lot so that they become ingrained in your playing. And you have to consistently think about them. Have a I used to write this list down that, I'm, that I've gone over for you guys today. I'd keep it on the piano. Anytime I was practicing my improv, my eyes would always look over. 
and I would see a texture, I'd be like, ooh, I gotta remember the texture. I gotta, essentially, it's creating music. We have to remember to create music from the notes and tools that we're learning. Just learning the blues scale, just using the altered scale, just learning chords, just learning Herbie lines, McCoy lines, right? That's not creating music. That's just learning notes, right? We have to create music from the notes, from the tools that we are learning. And all these textures do just that, okay? So hopefully that was helpful. Again, a more conceptual lesson for you all to bring, like, kind of really bring you out of the box, force you to get as creative as possible. I promise you, if you spend like a month on this, even a couple weeks, um, your playing will drastically change. Drastically, drastically. Like this is this is grown up stuff right here, right? This is professional stuff right here because it's less about notes at this point. It's about creating music. Right, you get to a point where you're 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 enough tools, enough notes, enough licks. You gotta use what you have and create amazing types of music from the tools that you have. And I promise you, you will sound way more professional, way more advanced than you ever have when you focus on this stuff instead of just continuously learning licks, trying to build your improv, doing other stuff. Okay. Again, don't forget to go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash Black Friday. 2023 if you want to get it on our black friday waiting list i have some amazing 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 updates and goodies that i'm going to be releasing on black friday you definitely want to get on there to check it out because there will be a vip waiting list so go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash black friday 2023 to get on there okay with that being said i'll talk to you guys later all right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Don't forget to go to jazzpianoschool.com to check out all of our free, amazing education, all of the free podcast blogs. We do have a membership if you're looking to take a next step forward with us, get access to over a 1,000 different jazz piano videos, playbooks, mini courses, a main course curriculum, success path, and so much more. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at support at jazzpianoschool.com. I hope you have a wonderful day, and as always, happy practicing.